Hey guys, I'm with Danny Giddis, who is a career coach and positive psychology practitioner. Danny, can you introduce yourself a little more? Sure. Thanks, Matt. Um, yep. Yeah, so my name is Danny, and my website is groupcoaching.com. Um, it was a great URL, so I took it. But I do one-on-one -on -one and uh, group coaching and workshops, and it's mostly focused on on people who are in career changes or. Uh, career growth challenges. Awesome. So in the past week, Danny has recently, he's done his first like email launch, um, meaning he's opening up like a coaching program um, and it has like an expiration date attached to it. And he's never really used email like to, to broadcast his coaching program. This is the first time he's launching it in that way. Um, so tell us a little about, about that. Sure. So the program is group coaching for artists only. And I thought that, that was a good place to start because my background is as uh, from the photography field and I've always been an artist. So I really know the language of what it's like to struggle as an artist. So I can speak to that um, fairly clearly without doing a bunch of market research. So it's a good place to start. And I have a list of an uh, email list from my photography days that I'm using to contact people that might be, you know, the right ones. And those who aren't are going to quickly unsubscribe and that's fine with me. Um, because I think it's important to, to start filtering. Um, and rather than waiting for the perfect program and the perfect, you know, setup and email list and everything, I was just like, screw it. I'm going to give it a shot and, uh, you know, see what I can learn. Um, even if I totally, you know, fall on my face and nobody signs up, I'll still get something out of it. So go for it. Awesome. Yeah. I, so I got your email blast, I guess, I guess you added me to your list and I got it and I was like, really like happy to hear, happy to see you in my inbox actually. Like I was like, Oh cool. You're launching a program. This is exciting. Like it says for artists only, which I loved because it was like, you are trying to actively repel anyone who's not an artist and then make anyone who is an artist feel really heard. Uh, so I, I like to see, I like that messaging. Um, it's, you know, it's very simple. It's very basic, but as you said, like it's, it, you just want to get something out there and stop overthinking it so much. Um, and, and so you've sent three emails so far, if I'm not mistaken. So you, yes. you sent one on the 27th, one on the 30th, I think. And then one uh, on the 31st, something like that. And uh, today's the first. And so in those three emails, what has happened? Like who has responded? Has anyone booked a call with you? Um, what has happened? Well, it's a lot of people who know me as a photographer. Mm -hmm. And so it, it was kind of a, a, of a shock, I think, for some people to go, oh, you're doing this? That's, that's cool, you know? But I did it with, I didn't make excuses. I was just like, hey, here's my program. That's it. You know, I didn't explain like, why I've made this transition. I did that a long time ago. I like wrote some blog posts and stuff. And um, so I just came right out of the gate and, and said, you know, and, and made the offer. Um, and wait, what was the question again? I'm going off track. Um, so what results have you seen so far in the three emails that you sent announcing right. your group coaching for artists? Yeah. yeah. So um, the response rate has been, I don't, I'm not sure what the percentage is. Um, but but it, but it's not bad, you know. I have like a few hundred clicks yeah. um, out of you know several thousand people on a list. So um, I'm feeling pretty good about the response rate, and I've filtered out a lot of people who, you know, frankly, I don't care for them to be on the list anyway. Um, and any calls that have come from this? Any calls? And, and did anyone book an appointment with you, or like oh. or buy the program? Yeah, so I have two people who have signed up already, which was which was pretty cool. Uh, one person was a client already that I have through through New Me. Um, so it's it's a coaching circle client, sort of pro bono. I'm coaching her, and someone is coaching me. Gotcha. And, and then the other person was a prospect that I had, so it was kind of a warm lead, somebody that I already did a consultation call with, who was considering coaching, but they had you know financial concerns, and uh, they happen to be you know an artist. So, uh, you know, we had really good chemistry and everything and he was like, yeah, but you know, it's kind of tough for me to swing this right now. Um, so this, 
this fit pretty well. And then there have been a couple of people who are artists that otherwise wouldn't be able to afford coaching. And that's also why I've sort of avoided going down the artist um, path too, too far because there's a lot of, you know, artists who don't have the funds. Yeah. Uh, but group coaching is a, a kind of a way around that, you know, as long as it's, if it's pretty affordable and if I get it's it. lower priced, right. It makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. So but I, each person pays $20 a session instead yeah. of paying, I don't know, 150 or whatever it is for one-on-one, -on -one, right. it's much more accessible. So what I like about what you're doing with this tactic, um, like with this launch is, uh, so a lot of people who are going to life coaching, career coaching, and they're like starting from scratch. Um, they're coming from a different world. Like they're coming from like, they used to be something they used to like work in marketing or they used to work in as a photojournalist. Um, and sometimes like we forget to leverage our background and all the past connections we made and like, and all the past things that we've built. Cause maybe we don't like it anymore, but what you're doing is you're, you're leveraging what you've already built. And that could be the easiest way to transition. Um, mm -hmm. and, you know, into building your into building your career coaching business is just using the list that you already had from your other from your other career. Yeah, yeah, using the list is one thing, um, and you know that only get me so far. Uh, the list is also connected to uh, LinkedIn, so people who I've been connected to, you know, for years, um, most of which I don't, I really don't even know them. They're like creative directors and you know editors and all kinds of stuff, some photographers, random people. Um, so I'm trying to leverage the connections that I already have and, you know, those that grow great and those that don't also great. Um, like you said, you know, actively repel the people who don't, who aren't interested. Um, and, and, but, but more than that, I think beyond using, you know, the list, the tangible things, it's about using the narrative too. Like I've, I've been able to connect to people through my narrative through saying, Hey, you know, this is my background. This is what I'm good at and explaining with a good story. Um, factual story, right. I'm not making this stuff up that, that I have skills from journalism that translate seamlessly into, into coaching. And that has made me the kind of coach that I am. And um, I'm really happy about that. It, it makes no sense to try to whitewash my past and say, oh, well, you know, I'm embarrassed because I, I just started coaching, you know, a couple of years ago or whatever. Um, because everyone has transferable skills, you know, and that's what I try to impart to my clients too. If you're making a transition, and I have, so I have to walk the walk. So if you're making a transition, what are the things that you learned that made you give you strength and made you who you are and made you successful? Um, that you can use in a different way just because you have a particular title in one area. So mine being, I don't know, photojournalist, photographer, journalist, whatever it is. Um, you, I, I was able to understand with some time that the skills that I had were listening, observing, um, reflecting back. You know, I was doing all of that. These are, you know, key tenets of coaching. But um, by the way, I don't know if I should be looking at my camera or at you. <laughs> so yeah. I'm no, I always have that exact problem and I don't have an answer unless you get like a extended like webcam -y thing that attaches your that your laptop. Don't worry about it too much. Super awkward. I'm like yeah. <laughs> um, so so yeah, you know, I think it's important to to understand your strengths and if you don't, then you know, coaching is also a way to help people understand those strengths so that they can use them in a new context and reframe it, speak about it uh, confidently. Nice. Yeah. When I was like starting to offer freelance content marketing services, um, uh, you just reminded me that I, I originally got like a handful of clients through my personal network as well. I, people that I didn't really know, like kind of friends of friends. Um, but I would direct, I would reach out to them with a direct message on LinkedIn or something, or even Facebook. Um, and just say like, Hey, like, you know, I don't know. I know we're only like, you know, I only know you a little bit, but I noticed that you are, um, you know, you have this startup that you're working on or it sounds like you're working on something. And, uh, um, I was wondering if you needed any content marketing help. I don't know exactly what I said, but I got, I got my a first, not my first client, my first clients through that, but like my third, fourth and fifth client through that, um, in content marketing. So definitely like leveraging the network that you've already built just naturally through your life is like pretty great way to build your business, like, and start getting your, a handful of clients so yeah and and it also helps you define 
the kind of people that are going to be attracted to you as well, right? So, mm -hmm. so my background is in some kind of creative or journalism field. Um, people are going to see my background on LinkedIn or, you know, my bio or whatever. And they're going to say, so if it's a finance person who's really buttoned up and only likes to, or only has like an inherent respect for people that match that sort of prototype, then they're going to look at my background and go, this guy doesn't feel right, you know, and that's fine with me, right? That's actually good because right. I want to have a clear understanding of who I'm supposed to uh, service and, you know, and who, who, who wants to work with me. And then I don't know, maybe that same finance guy is like, I want to make a change because I'm sick of this kind of in the box, you know, sort of uh, yeah. culture. And I need a guy who, you know, wears jeans and not the tie kind of thing. Um, yeah, exactly. So really, really like leaning into that background. Yeah. Makes sense. Totally, totally. And like you said, yeah, you know, like a lot of people, you sent out a blast and a lot of people unsubscribed or like weren't interested in whatever. But like when I, when someone unsubscribes from my list, like I'm happy that you unsubscribe because yeah. it means that, okay, you weren't interested and I don't have to waste time like reaching out. I like to really give a lot of attention to my subscribers and now I, don't, I no longer have to give attention to you and like waste my time doing that because you're not interested. So I, I'm happy if someone's not the right, right fit, I'm happy if they, if they like, if they say that or like, you know, they threw an unsubscribe or something like that. Cause I really only want to attract the right people. And it sounds like that's what you're doing too is only the right person and everyone else. Like if you're not a right, if you're not a good fit, then it's okay. Like someone else is for you. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I wish more people would unsubscribe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Please unsubscribe from my list if you're not interested. Um, yeah. and you know what? I might even do that. I might say like, Hey, this isn't for everyone. Um, if you're not this kind of person, if you're not, in, you know, if you don't want to improve this or that, you know, then this might not be for you. Please unsubscribe. I encourage you to do that. That's a good idea. I might. <laughs> um, so I actually have some of your emails open. Do you mind if we take a look? Sure. Um, and I will share my screen. Okay. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's go type in, uh, Danny. So these are emails that you sent. So these are three, um, new program for artists only. Um, so this is the first one I got, it was kind of out of nowhere and, and this is what everyone got kind of out of nowhere. Yep, exactly. And, and again, like, it's kind of cool that, um, I, I like that you, you weren't like, Oh, you didn't explain your transition. Like you, you kind of already had done that in other, in other pieces that you've written. Um, and you just dived right into it. If someone's surprised by it, you're not doing coaching. Like who cares? Like, uh, this is what you're doing now and you're launching something new. And this is like a new identity that you're embracing. Mm -hmm. Um, new coach, new coaching, new group coaching program, artists only. It is smart that you did, that you realize that artists tend to have a lower budget so that you made it a group coaching program to like resolve that need. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, to, to, to like appeal to that market because they can't really afford one-to-one -one as much as they can afford group coaching. Mm -hmm. So experience the difference between making resolutions and setting the right goals that will launch you to the next level. And then you got this picture of a black sheep over here. It's time to embrace your awesomeness, join us, and make 2019 the year that changes everything. And you're kind of getting them at the right time because we're recording this interview November 1st. So a lot of people like to jump into new coaching programs like for, to the start of the new year. So it's a good, it's a good timing um, to do this. Get paid what you're worth. End procrastination on dream projects. Focus on producing the work you love. Um, and then learn more here. And this leads to, I guess, the, the product page. I mean, yeah, yep. the offer. Cool. And how did you write this? Like, what was going through your mind when you were writing this, uh, this email? Um, okay, so I've been, I mean, I'm a perfectionist, and I tend to overthink things. And sometimes it comes to a head, and I'm like, I have to stop doing this. I'm just going to go for it and aim for, like, a B instead of an A+. Plus. And, um, so that was, that was the case with this. I was like, I've been wanting to do some sort of group coaching program. And I know that I have this, this artist's network or connections and, um, and background and I should just go for it. So rather than try to come up with like the most clever headline plays on words and, um, you know, what's going to make the biggest impact, I just went for straightforward. Um, actually I was watching a, uh, 
a training recently on, on good copywriting. And one of the things that the, that the trainer said was um, that you should do clear over clever. Mm. And I, I thought that was really good. And it, you know, as, as a journalist, that also resonates with me when, when you use big words and, and you know, you try to impress people with how smart you are, you actually turn, you know, they, they, they get chased away. Um, the New York times apparently is written on like a fourth grade level supposedly, you know, minus a few, you know, things here and there when they use big words, but, uh, uh, you don't need to use big words and get all clever in order to communicate something sophisticated and interesting. I like that a lot. Like it's so straightforward, new program for artists only. You could have been, you could have spent like, you know, like weeks and weeks and weeks, a B testing this headline and kind of agonizing over it. But like really the best test is just put something out there and see how people respond to it. And then for the next time you make improvements um, based on how they're responding to it. Yeah, exactly. And I, I knew I was going to send out a few more emails, which you know, I guess you'll, you'll show after, but um, yeah, I figured well, I'll try this kind of straightforward thing. And then if I have another idea later, I'll give that a shot. Um, exactly. But I, I don't have that much to lose at this point um, yeah. because uh, this isn't necessarily a, a super clearly defined market or you know that i'm that i'm sending this out to um right that and i'm just getting started so yeah right and and to put that conversation and like into context like you are still you are still trying to like perfect your niche and like really define it and identify it um but i'm glad that in like it's fine that you're doing that it's good that you're doing that because once you pick something it's going to be really really great um but and you and you you are close to picking something you've had plenty of great ideas but in the meantime, I like that you're not like, like you've, you're testing an idea right now. Instead of kind of getting caught up in your head about what, what might be the best niche to run with, um, sometimes what we need is just to get something concrete that, that we can work with and then tweak from there. Um, rather than having the niche exercise being this whole intellectual thing that we don't actually concretize and um, like put into practice somehow. Because it, it can evolve as, you, as you're like expressing it, as you're communicating it. You can learn more about what your niche could be. Um, right. yeah. So let's go to the second email. So, and by the way, what, did it matter what email marketing software you used to make this and what did you make to do this? Um, I've used, uh, in the past I've used Mail, MailChimp and I've used, um, there was like a proprietary thing through when I was doing photography uh, promotions, but this is through Wix, which is the host for my website, and they have all kinds of stuff built in, which makes it pretty convenient. I don't have to jump around everywhere. So I bought their like premium package with a certain amount of emails and e-commerce and whatever. Um, So I use their system and it's, it's, it's not the best. Sometimes it's a little frustrating that I can't customize the way I want, but it does the basic stuff and that's really what I need to do right now rather than focus on like making everything perfect. Yeah, totally agreed. Like there, there are lots of email marketing softwares, but for the majority of people, it's like, especially if you're starting out and you're just, you're just starting to use email marketing, you don't need some really high end sophisticated software that does everything. It's just a matter of like doing some, using something that's MailChimp, I think is, is good for 95% of people. Um, and it's the most basic one out there, but it does everything you need to do. The fact that your the Wix includes one that that's great. Like this is like this seems like it does the job, like ninety nine percent of what you need. Um, and then later on, like way down the line, there might be some need to create more sophisticated like funnels or you know autoresponders. But for the most part, all we really need is a really basic email marketing so. Um, service like like MailChimp or this Wix provider. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. But you know what? Actually, uh, I'm not getting paid by Wix to say this at all, but um, mm-hmm. they have a bunch of like auto response uh, options that you can, you know, you can kind of program your own things. I haven't gotten too deep into it, but... Um, no, MailChimp has that too. And that's the thing. I, I use autoresponders and, uh, um, you know, you can, and they're, it's pretty sophisticated what you can do on MailChimp for very, for very little. And I use MailChimp and, um, it, it only gets like the next level is like creating autoresponders based on like, uh, 
be like website triggers, like basically like someone lands on this page of your website and then they, they're on this, you have like eight different funnels and pathways that they can go on based on like how they're responding to your emails and like there's different like segues. It's kind of like a whole uh, complex thing like that. But you know, most of us all, all we really need is something that sells can um, something that sends campaigns and then, and then basic autoresponders. Uh, and that's really it. So, all right. So it took me years to learn how to succeed as an artist. It was a roller coaster, not the fun kind where you raise your hands and scream with joy, but the kind that rattles your brain and makes you puke. Other artists around me echo, echoed the same complaints, so I knew I wasn't alone. I'm so sick of getting underpaid. Why do some crappy artists do so well when great artists fail? Networking is so annoying and it doesn't work anyway. I sat at home all week and sent emails into a black hole. This isn't why I became an artist in the first place. How am I supposed to compete with all these famous people? By the way, are these things that, are, did you make these up or is this like exact quotes that people are saying? So I, I made them up, but from experience. Yeah. You know, I mean, these yeah. are things that I said and that people around me said all the time. And um, even if they're not somebody's specific language, they're, I tried to keep them as simple as possible so they felt like they would come out of somebody's mouth. Yeah, totally. I mean, these do sound, these do sound really realistic, like real things that like artists would say based on your experience. Sometimes it also helps to like look literally at what they're saying. Like if you go on Reddit and you go into like a discussion, uh, you know, like some discussion about the struggles of being an artist, you look in the comment section, you see literally the exact quotes that people are saying about that. You can use that pretty much word for word in your copy. Um, and you know it's coming right from the horse's mouth. Like that is exactly what they're saying. And they're saying it in a really quirky way. That's obviously very genuine and human. And uh, yeah, that, yeah, actually I saw something like that on the Facebook group the other day. It was like um, some guy saying that he doesn't feel original because he's repeating things that he has seen in the past and they're subconsciously influencing his work or something. I, but the way he said it was like, uh, it yeah. Just, <laughs> But that's great copy. Like that's like what the exact pain points that people are saying on Facebook groups. Like, you yeah. can't make that up in your copy. Like the the best thing might be just to use that exactly how they say it. Um, but this is this is great how it is right now. Um, just because you're you're like you're saying stuff that you know comes from real ex your real experience. Yeah. And I want to see where this goes. So if you sign up for group coaching by Thursday, you'll get a 20% early bird discount. And then there's this picture. Is that Danny DeVito? <laughs> no, he's just this dude that I photographed in. Uh, <laughs> it looks like Danny DeVito to me. <laughs> it's time to race your awesomeness and join us. Make 2019 the year that changes everything. So then you explain more about what is in the offer. Um, and then learn more. And that's, that goes to your pay, product page, your coaching page. Um, so, and then over here, it's more of a, your story. So. Right. Hey, hey, is your computer gonna shut down? Yeah. Let me plug in. Okay. Um, yeah, so what I, you know, I don't wanna make it about me. The idea is that, um, but I also don't want to like accuse people of anything, you know? So if I make it more about me in that case, um, I feel like it'll be more relatable. Um, yeah. I'm not selling something. I'm saying, look, here are my, here were my struggles. And, and hopefully people who are reading this can relate to those struggles and feel like, Oh, he gets me. Um, yeah. and I mean, at the same time sort of explain the difference between coaching and therapy and talking yeah, to your yeah. friend. Um, I mean, you know, I definitely liked what you said. I think it was either in this email or in the next email. Um, no, yeah, it was this story. Actually, I really, I really resonate with, with this story. And I think that it, it will convey that effect that you wanted it to, where people can relate to it. Cause you, you talked about therapy being the only thing you've heard of for self-help and you said it was okay, but it fo focused mostly on the source of problems. Um, after countless sessions, I love this line after countless sessions, I understood my problems, but still didn't have solutions. I resonate with that a lot. Um, and I'm sure a lot of other people did as well. Uh, which means 
which just shows that when you talk about your stories and your experiences, um, that's, that's the most convincing copy that you can write. Um, just sharing your stories, even if it seems like, I mean, there's a balance between like, it has to be relevant to the people you're talking to, but also just vulnerable and like you, it's you. And that's, you know, that's the most, that's the best copy out there because it's just authenticity and vulnerability and storytelling. Do you think that it would make sense to, um, to simplify this even further or just to pick that, you know, that one line or something and make the whole email about that? Yeah, because um, one thing I'm noticing about this email is that it's a bit long and the call to action is like way down here um, or there's one over here as well. And what, you know, in, in some of my done for you clients, like um, uh, we do email marketing like services and what, what often works when we're selling something is not these long emails. Um, like when we're trying to push someone to a product page, but just really, really simple, like uh, one line or two lines um, and then learn more. And then, it, and then we'll let the product page and the sales page do the rest of the work for it. Um, but really oftentimes the goal of an email marketing, like an email campaign, um, is to kind of get someone off email to like a page or, or, or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, and then once they're on the page, like you've already done a lot of the work to make the page look nice and make the page very high converting. Um, and so I would, I mean, this isn't bad at all. I, I like sometimes a long email makes a lot of sense because you just want to tell a story and nurture someone. But it's, it's like, depends on the goal of the email. If it's just about like you, them relating to you more, then you don't need to push them anywhere. But if, it, if you're selling something, then you do need to push them somewhere. Hmm. Um, but I would try in a new email. If you, I mean, you said the discount would die tomorrow. So I hope there's another email that's coming today. Um, just to like a final like reminder. Um, I didn't read this one actually, but. I wanted to ask you about that actually. Um... I was thinking of sending another email today, uh, but what's, you know, how much is too much? Um, usually the answer is like too much. You should, the answer is usually you should send more than you think because too much, like we think we're sending we're too much, too many emails, but usually we're not sending nearly enough emails. I've gotten launch sequences like where on the day of, on the day the discount expires or on the day the scarcity ends, um, I get like five emails in one day and oftentimes that, you know, that works. And I'm not, if I'm interested, I'm not bothered by that. And it's the same thing here. Like if, if people are interested in what you have to offer and what you have to say, uh, that's, that's who you're talking to and no one else really matters. Like everyone else, you don't mind if they unsubscribe, anyone who's interested might be, uh, would, will be open to receiving your emails. Mm. So I would definitely send one, another one today since you said the discount will die tomorrow. You don't need to do two at this point, but like in the future, um, when you're doing a launch, it, it's not unheard of to do three emails in one day or two emails in one day. Hmm. Um, I would definitely try one more, but the, 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 the next one that you do, um, really, really simple. So not like, so they don't have to scroll anywhere like down, but the call to action is like basically at the top and it says just a simple headline, you know, um, like last day, last yeah. This town, this discount expires tonight at midnight, and just something really, really simple, just to get people as many people clicking to the sales page as possible. Hmm. Um, but it also it, what also matters is what you're saying in the emails. If you're saying a lot of sales emails, so these are all three. These are sales emails, all three of these, and that's fine because you're you're launching something. Um, and if you're only doing sales emails, it's too much. If you do, if you just, if you're just selling in every email, mm -hmm. it um, value. yeah. And so, I mean, this is, it's value, especially if like what you're giving it's value right now, but you're definitely in pitch mode and it's good to do about like one of these a month. Um, like one kind of pitch in this, in this way, or like one launch a month or, 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 or less than that. Mm -hmm. But in terms of other sorts of emails, like pure engagement and pure content, you can do as many as, you know, one a day if you have the ability to. Mm -hmm. 
And then that, that, that kind of builds anticipation and just trust and relationship so that your next launch, people will be more responsive and they'll be interested. Um, but you know, that's how I go about it is like mostly, most of the time, 80% of the time you're sending just pure content, pure nurturing emails. And then 20% of the time you're, you're pitching, but pitching, hopefully you're pitching new stuff each time so that people don't like get tired of the things that you're pitching. And, and then they'll be more interested if like there's a new product every time you're pitching or a new offer every time you're pitching or just something slightly different. Um, they'll, they'll have less pitch fatigue. Gotcha. That makes sense. Uh, so this is like your Halloween email. So for some perspective, one-on-one sessions are 600 for one month. The group is one on 60 for two months. It'll go up to 200 tomorrow at 8 p.m. I mean, this seems like a really good test to, to work with because it is low. It's low priced. Like there's a low barrier to entry and it seems like realistic for a lot of these artists to try this out and, and they're not risking too much because it's low. It's a low priced offer. I almost think I almost think the price should go up to 320 tomorrow. Like the price doubles tomorrow. Hmm, gotcha. So that the value is. is yeah. Cause like the difference is $40 right now and, and that might not be too much. Um, that might not be enough. Um, but if it's like the price is doubling tomorrow or something like that, and it's still, it's still a low price offer for, um, like it's, it's, it's still affordable. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, I feel, uh, kind of, kind of mean if I, doubled it after no, I know, I saying, know. um yeah. you know no, people are like ah, i gotta think about it more and then it doubled yeah. and you're screwed yeah which should, i mean yeah this is just the test and this is just a learning experiment every time you every time you send an email every time you launch something you're learning something new and that's the next question i want to ask you is in your next launch um what will you do differently and 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 not just in your launch but like your whole overall email marketing strategy what would i do differently um what, what are you going to do better for next time i mean this i like this launch this is a great launch and I, and I hope to receive one simple and clean email tonight or sometime at some point today but and, and i think this is very successful you've already gotten two clients from this or, and other people are thinking about it so i mean i think you know i'm not even thinking about the next launch as much as i am how do i do those nurturing emails. So, because yeah. as, as I'm doing this, I think of what I would, how I would respond if I were receiving a bunch of salesy emails. Yeah. Um, assuming that I was like mildly interested in what was being offered, um, I might, I might still be like, all right, you know, it's enough. I get it, you know, and uh, I don't want to be that guy. So what I'm really thinking about is how can I give value, like give away some, some good stuff. Uh, so I started jotting down some, some big questions that people might have, and I'm thinking of doing like a video series. So it would be, um, you know, become a member of my site, basically whatever that means. There's like a members only site, uh, section, and then you get access to a whole bunch of videos that are like, you know, free training videos, um, and to email about those rather than, you know, and then to, to put some sort of useful, uh, related text in those emails to try to build relationships, um, you know, trust and, and that sort right, of thing. Exactly. Uh, and hopefully as a result of that, the next pitch will feel a little bit more natural. Um, but at this point I don't, I don't really have a, a concept of what the next one's going to be. Okay. I think that's actually really smart. Like the, the thing that you need right now is exactly what you're saying, just nurturing and building that relationship with the audience that you have right now and then continuing to, to build a list so you can just, see what like nurturing and engaging people is all about. And then you might see like, you might not even have to like, some people might end up buying just cause they like you and they like what you're saying. Um, and without you even running another launch, they might end up like booking a call with you one-on-one -on -one to learn more. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I agree with you. You don't really need to think about the next launch. It's more about nurturing right now and figuring out your nurturing campaign. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, it turns into some, some consultations. We'll see. But I know that, you know, I'm planting seeds and as long as I nurture them, there's a chance that some of them will, you know, bear fruit. Yeah. And maybe not, um, like it might not happen for a year, but 
these people like thinking long term really matters when you're doing this kind of work. Um, you know, some people just might, the timing might not be right for a long time, but as long as you're thinking long term about it and not like short term sales, um, that help that makes you that when you're thinking about, Oh, I need sales tomorrow. You start thinking in terms of like scarcity mindset and it's just, it's just not, it's not good psychologically. It's not good for your business either. Uh, so it's just, it's good to think about it long term. Like you're nurturing people over the long term. You're helping people over the long term. Totally. Yeah. I mean, if there's anything I learned from being a photographer is that work sometimes comes out of nowhere and there would be times where I was like, Hey, I'm going to make my rent this month. I don't know where that's going to come from. And then boom, I'd get a call from, you know, a client that I met two years ago. Yeah. Um, and that would happen. That happened in consistently, inconsistently, consistently, sporadically, something like that over the course of many years. And I'd learned to trust that. And I was like, as long as I'm putting the word out there um, and as long as I'm doing good work and working hard, that it's going to come back, you know, just having like a, a, some kind of faith that, that it'll happen. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. That's, that's the right attitude to have. Um, so Danny, thanks so much for doing this. Is there anything else you want to leave? Uh, any messages you want to leave um, before you go? Um, I mean, I, I was going to say earlier, like that, part of what I've learned through, you know, studying positive psychology and coaching is that uh, how you deal with failure is so important. And I'm really trying to walk the walk here because I know I'm, I'm in this learning stage and there are going to be a lot of failures, you know, a lot of like people who unsubscribe that I didn't think would, or, you know, I don't know, nasty comments or, uh, or nobody signs up or things like that. And um, I think it's really important to, you know, try to keep my head up and, you know, for, for anyone else who's watching too, you know, it's, it's a, a definite process of, of trial and error. Totally agree. Yeah. I mean, every failure is just like, you can either like be mad, but upset about it, or you can just like move forward and learn something new and do something, use it as a, as a learning experience to do something totally different and learn from your mistakes. 100%. All right. Thank you so much, Danny. Thanks, Matt.